are holding them accountable. I was actually really happy that that Zadia gave Ashley some good advice about the Stormy situation because when you handle things in a passive aggressive way that way, it's just not productive. Because even if Stormy was doing a little bit too much on that date, I agree with Araba. It wasn't fair for her to find out like that on the show. She could have at least known that Ashley had an issue with her because it was already going to be bad enough looking at the footage for the first time. Because the footage, I believe, was hard to see. I think it was hard to see herself look that way. Um, and that's on her. But Ashley definitely could have, you know, said said something, you know, blind, you know, you don't want to blindside uh, someone. So, I don't know. It was an inter interesting season. I don't know how I feel about it coming back. <laughs> it was interesting. I don't know what four we would have back the next four, <laughs> but um, it was different. That's kind of my quick thoughts. And just to add as well, ladies, thank you as well, Archie, for being really honest about the, you know, more of the one-sidedness from the ladies. And I think that just, again, puts it into a great perspective that if any men come out and say, you know, w women are being biased, I think this is a great example of holding both sides accountable. Because similar, the similar, similar things we've said about Tommy is what we're also saying about these hosts here. It leans too much to one side. Whenever watching Tommy, Tommy just seems to be dismissive. You know, he wants to get things done over. You know, he does tend to support the boys. And the same here with the ladies here. They're supporting the ladies too. And it just, it just brings an unfair balance that we don't get, a, we don't get the best out of these, uh, the hosts. So, uh, you know, commendable there, ladies, as well, for, for keeping that fair balance on both sides. And I appreciate that as well. Uh, I mean, still got a few minutes, obviously. Got about three or four minutes. What was you guys' thoughts then to, because uh, uh, I know we spoke about Ashley a little bit as well. We spoke a bit about Cam. Um, but I don't know if you, uh, Araba or Siwe said it much about, I know Siwe, you mentioned it, but Araba about Vern and her, her situation. I don't know how you feel about that, Araba. So I, I, huh. I cannot wait until you do your interview with Tabari, but I think this, this reunion gave us a kind of a, a head start as to what he's going to say. And I felt bad for Tabari. I did. You know, I wanted to kind of wait out and see if we could get more evidence on what that relationship looked like. Because when Vern had stated that his communication sucked, I said, well, Tabar, you can't be mad then if she's letting you go. But he brought up such a great point that what exactly will inspire me to close that communication gap if your body language is telling me you don't even, you're not even open to me communicating to you. And I, and I, and I really deeped it for a second. I was just like, oh, so you, you kind of left that out, Vern. <laughs> like you kind of, you know what I'm saying? You kind of made it seem like it was one-sided when really I think Tabari was unsure of how to close the communication gap because he wasn't sure if Bernisha even wanted to be around him. Um, and so I'm not sure if he was just trying to fill out that situation and give it a little bit more time, but I really did. I was appreciative of hearing that perspective because I think it, it, it kind of answered some questions that I had about that. Um, they have two totally different accounts of what happened. And so it's, it's kind of, sometimes it's a little difficult to, 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 you know, kind of come up with a definitive answer as to what went wrong. But I, I think I think I'm giving grace to Dabari because I don't know if I would feel comfortable reaching out as much to someone who closes themselves off to me. But then it, to also hold him accountable, then why did you stay so long? Right. Like, I feel like I'm not really sure what these contracts are looking like, but I think at the end of the day, it, it, everyone is making it seem like there there's a gun being held to their ha heads to stay on the show. And I kind of feel like if y'all are super invested and you're you're serious about finding love, where's the accountability to walk away when you're not really getting your needs met? Um, so that's what can be a little bit frustrating about this whole process. But yeah, I I don't think I think we all knew Vernicia wasn't into Tabari. Her just the way she was not willing to face him and speak to him like a human being on the reunion was a dead giveaway. Um, and I think, I think Vernisha, I think Vernisha is like one of those types of people who they want to show you so bad how much they've healed, but it's really performative. 
it's not, they haven't done the actual internal work. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's more so of a like, oh yeah, being healed in theory is a cool thing, but I don't know what that looks like on paper. I don't practically know how to, to, to show that I'm healed. Um, Cause that's what it, 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 it gave this whole reunion. It's just like, I'm loud, confidently loud. Look at me. My self-esteem is high. I'm not going to choose a, a weak link. And it was really like, but really sis, like, I think I, I really haven't seen any, any product of that. Um, and I thought it was funny because when it came to Jabari, um, there's been a few times during the show where Benicia had stated that like, you know, she can be traditional. She wants a traditional relationship. But at the same time, how is that the, the very thing that broke you and Jabari up? So which one is it? Like, are we going to be traditional? Or are we going to be out up to, to 2 a.m. in the morning? And there's nothing wrong with being an entrepreneur. I have a lot of entrepreneurial friends. I love what they do. But I think even they know when to kind of like say, hey, I want to live in my soft era. If my man is home, like I, there's no need for me to be out to 2, a, 2 to 3 a.m. in the morning. Um, so I kind of want Bernisha to like find a lane and, you know, not necessarily stay there and be one dimensional, but I think I, I, I don't, I'm not really sure if she even knows what she wants. Go for, go for yeah. Yeah. I, I think what, what Vern, I hope she hears <clears throat> and I hope she doesn't block me because I need her to hear this part. Right. I hear her. <laughs> I hear her with the y'all, y'all meaning us, the community can't tell her who to like. I hear her with the fact that Tabari probably wasn't communicating the best. But like Araba says, I need her to do some deep work as to whether she ever liked this man to begin with. And if she was ever giving him any choosing signals to do anything more than what he was doing. I think the fact of the matter is, when, when she had to leave um, uh, Jabari, right, alone, right, she really wanted Jabari. But then she had to pick Tabari, and she was waiting for Tabari to be extraordinary and to have some of Jabari's characteristics, and that just wasn't him. And when he didn't go above and beyond and kind of make her forget about Jabari, I think she started to resent him resent him and the fact that she was even with him. Like she knew she couldn't go back to Jabari, but Tabari just wasn't it. That's all it is. That's all it is. She wanted him to go above and beyond and he was meeting expectations at best. And because he was meeting expectations and wasn't going above and beyond, she was starting to get annoyed with him.